Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e steam horror of the hyena woman. Hell's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoman in this action-packed all-new e steam series adventure. Get e steam horror of the hyena woman in paperback and e-readers today. Historical Women in Crisis One of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series, I'm going to be talking about award-winning comic book writer Kelly Sue DeConnick. Now, Kelly Sue DeConnick is an award-winning comic book writer who has won Eisner Awards for her comics such as Wonder Woman, Historia, The Amazons, and Bitch Planet. However, Kelly Sue DeConnick, is, before she ever put fingers to the keyboard, wound up on the road to becoming a woman in crisis due to the dysfunctional way that she was raised. Now, Kelly Sue DeConnick basically grew up on various military bases because her father was in the U.S. Air Force, and this was the start of Kelly being on the road to becoming a woman in crisis because she didn't have that time with her father, and because she didn't have that time with her father, this is basically what laid the foundation for her starting on a road to dysfunction with daddy issues. And those daddy issues were sadly further reinforced by her mother, who would go out here and buy her Wonder Woman comics, thinking that they were Gold Girl books to give to Kelly as rewards. And this basically led to Kelly not getting a balanced perspective of men and women when she was younger. Now, Kelly basically growing up in that home, being given those Wonder Woman comics, and being taught all about the quote-unquote oppression of women basically put her on the road to becoming one of these feminists and not a woman and there's a clear difference between a feminist and a woman and i go in depth on that in my book the woman crisis a woman is a designed to be a help me who hopes to help men as related to serving in god's natural order whereas a feminist is a woman who basically covets the power of a man Moreover, they want to take the position that men have been given by God as related to his order. And when it comes to Kelly Sue DeConnick, basically she wants to take the position that many men have in the comic book industry because she believes that those men are basically oppressing women and presenting images that are not balanced as related to women in comics. Now, Kelly Sue DeConnick's whole mindset is very similar to that of her contemporary from the 1990s, Gail Simone, who basically thought that comics were going too far as related to content when she saw the, uh, the infamous Green Lantern issue where Alexandra DeWitt wound up in a refrigerator and created an entire website called Women in Refrigerators around it and used that as a way to come into the comic book industry. Now, like Gail Simone, Kelly Sue DeConnick wants to go out here and try to rectify what she believes is the imbalance as related to the pre presentation of women in comics, but the great irony of Kelly Sue DeConnick is that she comes from a very unbalanced perspective as related to women because of the dysfunctional home that she came in and the whole feminist frame of thinking that she came to be raised up in and the whole feminist frame of mindset that she has as related to stories and storytelling. 
Now, Kelly Sue DeConnick, as she was growing up on these bases, eventually then got a drama degree from the University of Texas at Austin, which really isn't a good foundation as related to storytelling. Yes, you know something about acting, but you really don't know much about writing. And Kelly Sue DeConnick basically was able to start to enter the comic book industry. She started to enter the comic book industry because she was writing copy for photos in adult magazines, which again is also ironic because I thought feminists thought pornography was degrading to women, but that does, didn't really matter to Kelly Sue DeConnick because, again, when it comes to some of these feminist indoctrinated women, they want to say that participating in adult content is about women being able to take their power and a form of empowerment, which is completely backwards, again, because, again, when it comes to pornography, Many of these women, again, they flip-flop on their position, but this is how she got her start. And eventually, she moved on from doing pornography, which again ran diametrically opposed to all of her feminist talking points, to get involved with fellow comic book writer Warren Ellis, who invited her to work on his new website at the time, artbomb.net, where she wrote catalog entries for comic book issues and also managed to get a job going out here adapting translations of Japanese manga comics and as she got that job adapting Japanese manga comics she worked with a translator and did this for seven years now she claims she did over 11,000 comic book pages and this is possibly how she got her skills as a comic book writer and possibly she did get some skills but I don't know because again translating material is a challenge in and of itself but you really do not need to know what you're doing but that really doesn't help you get a sense of story but as Kelly Sue DeConnick got that experience as related to things eventually she managed to get people to get her into comics and eventually managed to get a five-page story in CSI crime scene investigations Domino's number five and then eventually in 2018 after doing the Osborne limited series got started doing the Aquaman run of comics, but her whole perception of Aquaman is one that I found to be quite troubling, one that I found to be quite troubling because she thought Aquaman was a second tier character, and that's not really a really good professional perspective because it shows that she's bringing her own personal biases into the character. It shows that she really doesn't really know the character. Now, she says what she wanted to do was say that Aquaman is second tier, and basically, this she wanted she wanted to go out here and write her own take on Aquaman as related to things. But that's really not a really good perspective as I see it, because her whole perception of the character is she sees him as a second tier character, and that's not the way Peter David, a legendary writer, thought about Aquaman when he had his legendary run. No, when Peter David did his run. His whole perspective of the character was to see Aquaman as a lead character, and he basically redefined that character uh, into one of the greatest runs of the 1990s, but Kelly Sue DeConnick basically brought her own personal biases into Aquaman because she thought, oh, this character is second tier, and basically thought he was second tier because he was a man. But she wanted to say, oh, taking an interest in a character is one thing, but crafting your own unique approach is another. But that's not the way a professional writer does things. No, a professional writer, yes, they do their research, but they craft their stories to fit in line with the with other writers so that the character has a natural organic progression. And that really shows how limited Kelly Sue DeConnick's skills were as related to writing. But as she continued to go on with this Aquaman run, she then continued to work on other books and looked to work on other books like Captain Marvel, where she wanted to go like Brian Michael Bendis to make her own creative changes of making the character of Carol Danvers, who was Captain Marvel, into Miss Marvel. And that's where she looked to go out here and look to further promote her feminist ideas and project her feminist ideas onto a character that, that while the character was feminist in the past, she basically ratcheted things up to the point where 
this character basically lost a lot of her femininity and even lost a lot of her personality and her voice and she basically wanted to do this to basically make the character into fitting her feminist agenda which is not a trait of a good writer now as a guy who's been writing stories for over 40 years and wrote a lot of heroines in over 20 of them i can tell you making a character fit an agenda really doesn't help develop that character to actualize their potential and it doesn't really help that character grow to show that they are interesting or compelling but kelly sue DeConnick's standard for writing heroines basically is to write quote unquote strong women unfortunately while these characters are physically strong and act more like men they don't have any of the substance of the of women and the thing that kelly sue DeConnick doesn't understand about men and women is that one men and women are different and what makes a man strong does not make a woman strong no because she was indoctrinated into feminism she has this mindset that men and women are the same however what makes men and women different is what makes them special and what makes them special is the ability to again be completely different but Kelly Sue DeConnick doesn't understand that because she basically covets the power of men and wants to make her heroines basically be like men. Unfortunately, that doesn't make those characters appealing or attractive for the core male audience. Moreover, it doesn't appeal to many of the women who are fans of comics who basically see this whole masculine version of Carol Danvers as completely unattractive and Kelly Sue DeConnick basically wants to make her kind of stories and doesn't have any regard for the customer. And that's where this woman in crisis basically has made a crisis in the comic book industry in the years that she's been in the business. Because as she's looked to promote her feminist ideas in comics, it's led to basically the destruction of the Carol Danvers character with Captain Marvel. Moreover, her whole attitude and mindset have done damage to characters like Captain Marvel and basically created an environment where sales are at an all-time low on comics overall because Kelly Sue DeConnick's reaction and response to people who criticize her is to tell people to not buy her books and that is that whole mindset basically drove a lot of people away from comics and basically is one of the reasons why the comic book industry is dealing with a crisis overall. Now, Kelly Sue DeConnick's whole mindset is to make comics basically feminist as a right to, to balance things. But again, ironically, what she is coming in from is an unbalanced perspective, and that basically makes it where these comics become completely unbalanced, where we get this whole gynocentric view of these women, and the women are supposed to be presented as strong. Unfortunately, when you have a Kelly Sue DeConnick story featuring heroines, they are basically Mary Sues, who are basically unbeatable, and they are featured in very boring stories that basically go nowhere. I know this because I've read many issues of Captain Marvel, and they're just not exciting. And they're not exciting because Kelly Sue DeConnick's whole standards for writing comics is basically making feminist and not women. And going out here and making sure that characters uh, go out here and meet the standard of the Bechdel test, where she says, if you can replace your character with a se sexy lamp and the story basically works, maybe you need another draft. And that's not a good indicator to writing heroines. I know this because I've been writing heroines in books for over 20 years, such as Isis, Esteem, and Spinsterella. And I can go out here and write heroines and make the story work because I understand that women are complex people and they have flaws and I always focus on the flaws because the flaws help drive the conflict as related to women and the struggles that they have. I always focus on the struggles as related to a character's flaws, such as, for example, with the Matilda Crowley character, she's dealing with struggles of one, being biracial, two, she's dealing with struggles of being an introvert, and that makes her interesting in addition to her being a black goth character. And in the case of Isis, yes, she's a goddess, but she has flaws in that she's struggling with just 
being raised as a human being and dealing with the struggles of just seeing things from a human perspective. And in the case of the esteem character, here is a human being who was raised by gods and is basically dealing with the whole uh, struggles of, of a human having to deal with the issues of these whole pressures of being perfect. And again, these are the kind of flaws that I go out here and put in stories as related to developing heroines, and I don't need to put any sort of feminism on them because I understand when you're writing heroines, you need balance as related to those stories. You need balance as related to presenting that woman as someone who's relatable. That's what I did with another character I did called Nikki Desmond in the All About Nikki TV series that I wrote as related to its fabulous first season. I showed that this spoiled rich girl basically had issues and flaws as related to the whole structure of her family. But Kelly Sue DeConnick doesn't understand balance because she came from an unbalanced home as related to things because she didn't have her father to give her that in, that model for manhood because he was constantly on different bases. They were constantly moving and without that father to again show her a model for manhood, she doesn't know and understand men or experience, has experienced men as related to things and with her home life being completely destabilized, she overcompensates and tries to make it, it all about strong women but doesn't understand what makes a woman strong is not being like a man or being in the position of a man. No, what makes a woman strong is strength of character. What makes a woman strong is her internal character as related to her moral position. And sadly, Kelly Sue DeConnick, for all of her feminism, never heard the old African proverb, a race can rise no higher than the moral position of its women. And as the woman goes, so goes the race because basically she has no moral position and she has no moral position because if she's worked, she worked, started out working in pornography, she didn't have that moral position to say, maybe this ain't the job for me. But again, she basically wants to sit there and talk about, oh, she's creating these feminist stories like in her Bitch Planet comic where she talks about how the women don't follow the rules of patriarchy. But the whole thing is, is that without patriarchy, which was created by God, we would not have any sort of creation. And that's where Kelly Sue DeConnick gets it all twisted. Again, patriarchy is not made by men. Patriarchy was made by God, who is not a man. And that order was established by God because God is the ultimate creator and his son, Jesus, is a part of the patriarchy. And again, no woman will ever beat the patriarchy because when you challenge the patriarchy, you're basically challenging God because it was God who made men to be the head, God who made men to be the stewards, and sadly because Kelly Sue DeConnick doesn't understand the Bible or the Word of God. She's basically a woman who is lost and just completely disconnected. And this lost, spiritually lost woman doesn't understand what the role of a woman is and doesn't understand the role of a woman because her mother basically gave her these feminist Wonder Woman comics and didn't give her balance to show her different heroes and different heroines. I mean, she didn't go out here and give her comics like um, Terry Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty's Mystery. Now, Terry Max Allen Collins and Terry Beatty's Mystery, yes, that character is a feminist character, but there's more balance on that character because the men who created it basically understood the dynamics of the paradigm of Mike Hammer, of Mike Hammer Pulp Fiction. And she didn't, again, get that balance. And when it comes to many Kelly Sue DeConnick stories, they basically, again, they get critical acclaim. But the whole thing is that many, I've read many of her stories. There's no real balance to really help you get that picture of how men and women work differently. I mean, yeah, she makes, she gets a lot of controversy on social media, but that whole controversy doesn't really generate sales because again, when it comes to feminist indoctrinated women, they basically, again, want the job for shallow reasons. 
and they'll get these jobs based on shallow reasons, but the whole thing is is that they don't really know what they're doing, and Kelly Sue DeConnick doesn't know what she's doing as a female writer because she wants to write feminist stories, but doesn't understand that really good storytelling isn't about giving us one side of the story. No, really good writing is about giving us all the sides of the story so that the audience can see a balanced picture. Yes, there are comic creators who are sexist. Yes, there are comic creators who are misogynist. But we can't have somebody going into misandry the way that Alice Walker did with books like The Color Purple that really basically demonize black men. No, you have to have a balanced perspective that shows us where both men and women are wrong because you want to show your character's flaws and how they grow out of those flaws. That's what you want as related to quality storytelling because a writer's job is to remain objective and that's one of the reasons why Kelly Sue DeConnick as a writer is a woman in crisis because she came into comics not with a passion for storytelling as related to making the keep maintaining the integrity of these characters she didn't come in with a passion as related to maintaining the integrity of these characters no what she wanted to do was you push a feminist agenda between the lines of comics similar to the late william moulton marston who basically was a sexual deviant who basically wanted to push use Wonder Woman comics to push his devi sexually deviant agenda until editorial basically checked him and DC editorial finally got a hold of that character and started to balance that character out. But ironically, what Sh Sh Kelly Sue DeConnick wants to do is take us back to a e place of unbalance that William Moulton Marston took us to and that's not quality storytelling and it's not quality storytelling because Kelly Sue DeConnick basically is looking to give you an unbalanced and biased view of heroines that really doesn't show us what makes a heroine strong. No, she doesn't show us what makes a heroine strong the way I try to do in books like the Isis series or the Esteem series or in books like Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilda and Spinsterella and other books I've done like Eternal Night. I mean, when I write heroines, I try to put some balance on them. But sadly, when you have someone like Kelly Sue DeConnick, she doesn't see that her picture isn't really empowering women. No, it's basically giving you just a slanted picture. And that slanted picture basically has done damage to the comic book industry as related to sales because her perspective of women is not a balanced picture of women. No, it's a picture of women in crisis written by a woman in crisis. Now, if you want to learn what leads to women like Kelly Sue DeConnick to have this distorted view of women and how they wound up on that road, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you want to see more a balanced picture of heroines in store in comic book stories, you can pick up my first full digital comic, A Steam No Good Deed, which is available on Kindle for 99 cents. And if you want to pick up some stories that feature a balanced picture of heroines, you can pick up many of the books I mentioned in this video on the SJS Direct imprint, such as books in the Isis series, the Esteem series, and books such as Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilda, and Spinsterella, and my vampire novel, Eternal Night. And you can also find them in my romance novel, A Recipe for Success, and my novel, The Temptation of John Haynes. Now, this was a video requested by one of my viewers, and if you want to request a video, you can drop a donation for a minimum of $15 to the PayPal or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Amari's Revenge. The goddess next door is confronted by a Nubian queen out for revenge at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in this inaugural Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Amari's Revenge in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. 
Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spinsterella. Discover the dark side of love in this goth and lovely romance with Spinsterella. Get Spinsterella in paperback and e-readers at your favorite online bookseller today. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.